Now that we have made the jump animation, we can actually work on the climbing animation with the motion warping. So it's gonna be a little bit complicated. There will be a lot of code there with some line trace, some the motion warping. You will see a lot of stuff to make your life easier. You should actually watch this part. Uh, just watch it if you want to if you want to implement it in your game. Just watch it one time just to see the general idea on how it works and then come back and actually follow along but don't get trapped in the tutorial and just doing this try to understand what we are gonna do and i will try to explain to you the easiest way it's gonna be a little bit long video let's dive into it and i hope you will understand if you have any question please ask in the comments and i will try to reply to you either in the comment or i will make a video about it if it's a very like specific uh, use case just tell me and I will try to figure it out for you. So let's go. We want to do some climbing. So first of all, we have the climbing animation. We have our climbing animation in here. It's a very simple climbing animation. I got that from Mixamo. So here it is. Now, first of all, we have the, the typos at the beginning, like every uh, animation that we have. So we will just remove it. Up, we go in the animation length, put the set range, and we put the minimum to not for one and the maximum to 115. To be sure we have everything. Then we click on Reimport and we don't have the typos anymore. Now we will need to use a plugin. So we'll just save and to use a plugin. Let me just talk this here. We will go into the plugin. In the plugin section, we will search for warping and we will actually toggle these two. Uh, it says that this is a beta but uh, it's okay it works perfectly fine so we will enable this and we will restart now now the project has restarted we will reopen our climbing animation we actually don't need it so i will go back to my testing map and now we can work on our climbing animation so our animation is a little bit long look so we have a first phase when the bunny is actually like climbing like this then he's gonna put his feet then put the other feet and then up climb and put his feet so it's a little bit too much so what are we gonna do is that we will actually cut and start our animation from the 44 frame with the animation where it's already kind of climbing so he's attached to the edge because we don't need to have the part when he's like this and start climbing it we want him already climbing because we don't need the entire animation so we just want him climbing with a feet already on the edge and just up climbing on top so we will cut it from here 44 we'll save this and re-import so now we have an animation just climbing on top of the edge which is better now we will create an animation montage so we'll right click on the climbing animation and we'll create an animation montage for this am uh, climbing and we'll open this uh, so we will use the motion motion warping so what is the motion warping it's to move our character you will actually use two motion warping the first one will be the translation so i will show you i will try to show you we will add some shape we will add a cube we will climb this little cube. Oh. Let me see if that's big enough. We'll check. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Put a little bit down. So we have our little cube and we want to climb it. When my character is gonna be in here, I will just add a character. Oh, I don't want to open it. I just want to place it in the scene my character is gonna be there and then i will actually jump so when you will see the edge there you will see the edge we want to play the animation and at the same time we will want to slide it up 
when the bunny is going up and then slide him on uh, on the x axis to actually pull him on top of the of the of the edge you will see it will be here it will come here you will see the edge you will grab it then go up and at the same time go this way to appear in here while doing the animation and we put two different uh, motion warp because if we put only one the bunny is gonna slide like this inside the cube so we'll just put one to go up and one to go on the side so we'll do this so okay now we have our little bunny so we will check our animation and here it's going up it's going up and there it's kind of going at the edge so we will use this as the up and this as the translation to be on nice on the edge on top of our cube so we'll go around here at frame it's a little bit too much like here at frame 9 it's actually like start to go up we will go there we will right click and we will add a notify states and it's the motion warping so we add this so we have the first frame, the beginning, and we have the end. The end, we will actually place it. We will place the end around here. When it finish going on top, and we start to go in the front. So we will take this and go there. Now we will open our little motion warp. And we will change some stuff. Okay, so we will open this root modification root motion modifier will open this and we'll need to add stuff here so the warp target name is gonna be ledge climb up this is very important because it's the name that we will use after in the blueprint so we put ledge climb up and then we will ignore the z axis because we will go on the z-axis, so we don't want to block the z-axis. And we will uncheck warp rotation because we don't want our character to like start doing some weird stuff with the rotation. And that's... And that's perfect. So we close. I will put this a little bit smaller. And now we need to have the climbing, the ledge climbing to go forward. So we'll go around there when it's actually putting his feet on the edge I will actually make him go forward to be on the edge so in here I will right click and add a notify state motion warping and the end will not go at the end we will stop a little bit before we want like there it put his feet and we'll actually finish in like there at the frame 40. I will go and put this at the frame 40. And we will open the root motion modifier as well and we will change the same stuff. So we'll put ledge climb forward. And we will also ignore the Z axis and the warp rotation. And that's perfect. So we can save this. So we have our animation, uh, our animation montage with the motion warping. So we save this and we close this. Now we will go in our blueprint player character. So how are we gonna do that? So how are we gonna do the climbing? So first we need to have the edge recognition. We need to find an edge. So what we're gonna do? It's when our bunny is flying so when it's actually jumping or not even like jump jumping when it's actually falling from the ground so it's not on the ground anymore we will actually from his head make some line like this no so from his head like here from the face we will make the line we will trace some line like this I put him a little bit down so for example in here 
we will create some line like that and we'll go up until we get out of the cube so it will touch 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 and when it doesn't touch anymore that means there was a wall and we are on top of the wall and from this top position we will make some like this some line like this to actually find because we found the edge there from the front now we need to find the edge from the top so we'll put some line like this to actually find the top in here and then we'll have the coordinate of this and this so we can place our bunny so that's gonna be our edge recognition so we'll go and work on that So we'll add a new event that we didn't use yet. It will, it's the event tick. So the event tick is the ev event that is called at every frame. So when there is a new frame, when the uh, the computer is creating a new frame, it's gonna do all the calculations that are after that. So we'll check this every time. So every time we will be falling, we'll check if there is an edge and we can actually climb because we don't want the player to fall, we want him to grab the edge. So first of all, as I was saying, we will get our is falling. So if our character is falling, we will create a branch. So we can to create the branch. We can either right click and type branch. Or we can actually press B and just left click. That work as well. So if we are falling, we will do a line trace. So we will do line trace by channel. So this is to create some line. I will show you how it works. Uh, so we want the start. For the start, we will get the actor location. I want my location, the location of our actor. And we will add add 50 in here because we don't want to start from the bottom we want to start from like kind of his, his head so we'll start from here our line so there will be the point for the beginning it's the start and then we want the point for the end and for the end it will be we will get the actor rotation and we will get the forward vector because we want to place a line in front of the character. So we need the forward vector. We get the forward vector. And from this, we will multiply this forward vector by a float. To multiply it by a float, I just place a new node. I call this add, the operator add. And I can right click here and she choose from which uh, variable I want to add. So I will press to float. And I'll put 150. And now I will do a add. Up, because I want to have the first point to be the actor location plus uh, 50 in the Z. And I want to have the forward that is uh, on the same location as our uh, start point because we don't want to have something like this we want something like straight so we'll add this and we'll add the forward vector for our end and I will on the draw debug tip I will use persistent to actually show you let's check so I have my bunny and if I jump it's not working what did I do? What did I do? Yeah, this I say multiply and I put plus. So we will remove this and we will do a multiply. So the multiply is either you can type multiply or you can just put the little star. And we do a multiply and I will do the same thing. We will right click there and do two float. And I will put 150. Up. And if I test it now. Okay, now it's from from the head of the character. So for our climbing, I will show you how it works. Now, if I jump, I'm actually touching the cube. So what I will do is that if I touch in here 
if I touch the cube somewhere. So for, for, the from, for the first touch, I will actually start doing this to find the edge, the top edge. Because if I jump here, I touch nothing, so I cannot climb anything. But if I fall from here, I don't think I touched it. We will see. No, I didn't touch it. Uh, but it's okay, you will understand. So if I was close enough to the edge, I will actually have one of my lines touching the edge, and then I need to find the top to be able to climb it. So if I touch, so we have two different stuff that return from the inline trace by channel. So if I touch, this will be true, and if it doesn't touch, I will, it will be false. I will actually put a branch in here. So if I touch, I will do some stuff. So if I touch, I will do a for loop with break. Um, so we will touch the cube. So the first ray touch the cube. So then we want to create like some some line like this, but not like infinite. We will create 20 of them. 20. And if we actually touch the edge, that means we can climb. So we will stop everything. We will break this for loop. We will put something in here to break it. And then we can use the completed. That means the last uh, line trace that I created is the touch of the edge. So that's a good. And we will uh, then create a new line trace. So we'll create a line trace again by channel. I will put this to persistent to show you. And we will need the start and end. So we will go back to our first line trace. We will get the out it and we will break it. So if you just put it there, there is the break it result. We will break it and we have a lot of information that we can use. First will be the trace start to actually put in our start. So we'll get the trace start and we will add some value on the Z axis because we don't we want so we touch the uh, cube and now we want from this touch start putting some line like this. So we go at the start will be on the top so we get the start of the line plus some Z axis. We put 90 and we will we need to play with our index because we want to create some line like this. So we'll play with the index. So I will actually multiply this index by 10. And we will get our forward vector. So we'll get the actor rotation. We'll get the forward vector. We'll multiply this forward vector. So I put this there. This I will transform this to an integer. So we'll multiply our forward vector by the index because we want to put the first here then on that then after then after then after and then we can add I want this one to be there and this one there Up. Okay. and this is gonna be our start point so our start point is gonna move from the forward vector 1 2 3 4 5 and so on until the 20 or if it touch it's gonna stop and for the end it's gonna be the same but we will just decrease because the start point will be there and we want the end point to be here so we'll do minus and on the z we will put 100 and i'll put this in the end and we'll go what's we'll check what's going on so i will go there I will jump and you can see now that I have the first line. I will just stop to really zoom in. Yep. So we have, oops, it's a bit complicated. So we have the first line here that touch the cube. 
from this line, we will start creating some line like this. We have this line, this line, this line. And we go and we create 20 of them. And now when we actually touch here, this one touch is the first one to touch the cube. We will stop our treatment. We will st stop the for loop. We will break it and we will say to our character to play the animation and to warp to this position. So let's do that. I hope you follow along. It's a little bit complicated, but I hope you follow along. If you have any questions, tell me in the comment. I will try to uh, help you. So if we touch, so we go and put the branch. So we press B and click. Otherwise, we just right click and the branch. If we touch, we will do a sequence. Sequence. And from the sequence, the first will be, we will set a boolean. I would like to have a boolean saying that I'm actually climbing so that we don't uh, go and jump and do uh, a lot of crazy stuff. So we'll put is climbing, a new boolean, and we'll put it in the category of the booleans. I will get it and I will set it to two. And the, after that, here, we will start doing our uh, motion warping and everything. But first, I want to put plug this one to the break of our for loop. And we can double click on our little line to make it a little bit uh, cleaner. I will go on the top. Up, I put one here and I put a second one here to have something a little bit more clean. So you can see now we have our first line crest that go like this. Then we touch the wall or anything. We touch something. Then we go like this for 20. And if we touch something, we actually stop to create some line. We don't need to create line anymore, so we can just now climb. Let's see this. I will go there. I will jump. And we can see now that the line stop here. So when we touch the first touch, we actually stop doing this. And now it's perfect. OK. So we'll just take all of this and pull it a little bit up and then we'll create some function to have it a little bit cleaner. But let's just now focus on the motion bar to not have some weird stuff going on with our like bunny like trying to climb like a crazy uh, rabbit. We'll do a do once. So this, everything that will be after, we'll be doing it only one time until we finished when we actually did the motion warp and everything will reset it because this will play at every frame and there is a risk that this goes again and just go and go and go and just keep doing the motion warping and go crazy. So we'll do once. Uh, what are we going to do once? We're going to do the motion warp. First of all, we will put the, uh, we will change our character movement. We will set our movement to mode. We set our movement mode to be flying. Up, I will show you what flying does. If I go there and I jump like this, there is nothing going on. If I go there, I have issue with my keyboard. Okay. If I jump, I fly. <laughs> it's because I want my character to actually go from here to here. And if I don't put the flying mode, it will just go down. The gravity will be still working. So we just want to stop the gravity while we do our motion warping. Otherwise, it will not work. So we remove uh, the gravity and then we need to add a component to our uh, beautiful bunny. So we'll click on add and we want to have the motion motion warping component, this component. Now that we have this component, we can up, drag, uh, drag and drop him, uh, do the add or update warp target. So we we'll do add or update warp target. We'll plug this in and we will break this 
warp target. So we will right click on the pin and we will split the struct pin up. And now we can uh, fill this in. So the warp target name is going to be the name that we have put in our animation montage. So we'll go in our animation montage. And the first one was the ledge climb up. So I will copy it, prevent the error, copy it, and I paste it in here. Uh, we will just put the actor rotation to be our actor rotation. We don't want to change it. And we will split this target location. It will be easier. So we want to have the location of the X, Y, and Z. So the location, as I was saying, is the, when we touch, it's the top of the loop. So we'll get this. So we will go in, in here. The line trace that touch, we will break this hit result. And we will get the location. We we'll see the location of the hit in the world space. So it's exactly what we want. It's the location where we have touched the cube. And we will break this vector. Because we don't want to have everything. Because this is the ledge climb up, we just want to have the location of the z-axis. We will not do the translation like this straight away. So we just want to have the z-axis. We put the z-axis there. And for the x and y, we will use the actor location. Let's get our actor location. And we will break. We will split this truck spin. The x, we will add something. And we will get or actor forward vector and we split split this spin also and we will multiply this by 48 and we will also multiply this by 48 so if you have a different character it will maybe be different so you can try to put the one i put and if it's not working well not perfectly you can just tweak them there will be a few variables that you can tweak these two can be tweaked and we'll put this in here. And this is going to be our target location X. And for the Y, we'll do the same stuff. We'll add. Up. Put this in here and this one in here. And the Y is going to be in the Y. So now the climb up is good. We need to do the same for the climb forward. So we'll get our motion warping and our outdoor update warp target. We'll plug it in. And we just change this to the forward. I will get it to be sure I don't mess around. Up, up, okay. So we will go and get up our location again and we will break this vector. We will pull the X and Y straight away because it's the, our destination and we will just tweak a little bit the Z. So we will get our actor location. I will break this pin, split this pin, and for the Z, I will add 50. So that's the same, it's the value that you can tweak if uh, it's not working properly for you. And we will get the actor rotation for the actor rotation. We don't want to change this. We will compile and save. And now we can play, we can play our montage, we can play our animation. Uh, so we will get our mesh, and we will do a play montage. The asset that we want to play, it's our climbing. And in the play rate, I will put 1.5 because I want it to go a little bit faster. And now, when we start doing our play montage, we will stop this event. This event, we will stop it. So that it does not go back in there and just start doing stuff again. We stop it. So we will get, we will set the actor tick enable to false. So this function is not gonna work anymore. And we will get our spring arm. Now we'll set the do a collision test. We don't want to do the collision test anymore. It's to prevent the spring arm to do some crazy stuff with the camera. And then to make it a little bit better, in, we will go back in our animation montage. We'll stop this animation. And we will not stop it at the end because it's too long. So we'll cut it in a little bit here. We'll the animation for example at 40 if and because it does nothing it's just like stay like we are doing weird stuff so when is up we will just stop it like at 43 so we will create a new notify i will create a new notify track because this track is for the motion mapping we will create another one and we will right click and we will add in the notify we will add a montage notify 
So we will put nothing inside, we don't have to set it up. We just want to have a notify in here. And then we can use this on notify begin. So when the animation is going to be... So it's going to do the motion warping, dot, dot, dot. And when it's going to go there, it's going to trigger this on notify begin. And we can stop our animation. So what do we need to do? We need to set these two back to what they were. So we want to be able to do some tick again and want to do some collision test. And we will uh, get this, the movement mode, and we want to pull it back to walking. Because now we are on top of the edge. Put this to walking. And now we can put also this variable to uh, false because we are, we are not climbing anymore. Compiling save. And we need to not forget to reset this do ons, otherwise we will never climb anymore. I will show you. We will go and we will climb our little cube. That's that's weird. But we don't climb anymore. <laughs> Let me see what's going on. So we'll go in here and we will plug this in the reset of the do ones. I will make it a little bit clean. So I double click on the line and I do this. Then I go in here, I double click and I do that. Okay, it will do for now. Okay, I found it. I found the issue. <laughs> Took me a while. But the problem is... Is that I didn't lock the Z axis uh, for the root motion. If we go back to the last video with the root motion, if we actually go and check our climbing animation, to fix the issue of the z-axis, we will uh, use the root motion to block uh, the animation. So we'll go. And in the root motion, we'll enable the root motion. And now we can see that it's doing the climbing in the in the floor and we will put this zero and now it's gonna be blocked let's try again let's go it's finally working <laughs> it took me forever to figure it out but okay here we are now if i jump i climb on the edge perfect 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 Sometimes it's a little bit weird. But if I fall here, I will fall, I fall too, too fast. I don't have a lot of air control. If I actually... Okay. It's working perfectly. It's kind of nice. You, we can see the motion warping. It's like go up first and then go on the side to get on the edge. We really can see the, the motion warping there. And we can see that when he's on top, he actually take a little bit of time. Look. Like the animation still like trying to climb, but he's already on top. We could actually uh, improve this by going in our animation uh, montage. And maybe we will change some stuff. So I will go Maybe, maybe, maybe we can move this motion warping a little bit to here. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. This is gonna be the go up like until the 17th frame. And maybe just straight away after we can start doing the motion warping to put the feet. And when the feet is up, we can actually stop it. We'll try with this to see what's going on. Let's check. Maybe it's gonna be a little bit better. Ah, still, no? Ah, it looks... Looks good for now, I think. So what do you think? Did you like it? I will just remove the red line because we don't need it anymore. Up, 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 up. In here, the debug, draw debug type will put to none. 
and this one to none as well. We can compile and save. And now we can climb. Perfect. Okay. We can actually put. We can go and uh, by pressing Alt and drag, we can put some on the cube. We'll make like a little platform. To make the character jump. Put this. Put this somewhere there. Maybe we can add another one there a little bit up. And can we actually go on top? So we can go on the first one. We can go on the second one. We can go there. We can climb this one. And we can go. And I fell down. It's perfect. It was a long video. It took me a lot of time to figure out the, the issue with the route motion. But it's working. So we almost have everything uh, for our game. We will need to add some physics, but we will do that later. First, the next video will be about uh, multiplayer replication. Because if I show you now, I will put two players. Up, so I have two uh, players. You can see that I have this player. They are not even on the same server. Up. If I go in the net mode and play as listen server and we put two player, I will do this and there will be two bunny. I can put this one there and the other one is there. If one is actually climbing, we can see on the right, I'm, um, I'm actually playing with the one on the right, but we can see the server on the left. If I climb, actually working. It's actually working on the server, but if the server, uh, oh, can I show you? I will do this. If the server is climbing, we can see that the animation is not replicated. You can see that. Okay. You can see on the bottom right that in the server, the bunny is just like going on top. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. A little bit weird. But we will fix that with the replication. So we'll do that uh, on the other video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very long. I hope uh, you understand, you understood how to do the motion warping, how to use it. Uh, and if you have any question or if in any issue, please ask in the comment. And if you got all the information you want on the motion blend, please drop a like. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss the multiplayer replication video. And that's it for me. I see you on the next one.